Hi, I'm Barbara Fox. When I started looking into transport for the mobile networks, I didn't recognize the terms or have a basic framework in my head to understand 5G. So today I'd like to give you my quick, extremely high level view of 4G and 5G. In 4G, starting with the towers, there are radio heads and BBUs. These make up the E node B. The radio vendors, Ericsson, Nokia, Huawei, and NEC got together to define SIPRI, the common public radio interface, which is synchronous communication between the radio head and the BBU. They didn't standardize it fully, so an Ericsson radio has to talk to an Ericsson BBU, same for Nokia and the rest. And this is called the front hall interface. So when you're supporting mobility with you moving from one tower to the next, the X1 interface is used between towers to hand you off as you move. So traffic is backhauled from the towers to the mobile core. And in 4G, it's called the evolved packet core. In the core, subscribers and sessions are managed. It's also where traffic is moved from the telephone or cellular network to the packet network or the internet. In 5G, the mobile core is called the next generation core. Essentially, the functions are the same, but there's greater separation of the control and data traffic. And the main difference is that they don't want all the traffic to have to be backhauled to the core to be gatewayed between the cellular network and the data network. In 5G, that functionality should be available closer to the edge. But in moving to 5G, the next generation core is not an immediate requirement. And the mobile operators have a history of rolling out solutions and stages. When 4G was first defined, the vendors and the service providers couldn't roll out the full functionality. So they started LTE, or long-term evolution, to the complete 4G solution. So they'd roll it out in stages, and they will continue to do that for 5G. So initially, if 5G radios are backhauled to the 4G or the evolved packet core, that's called a non-standalone solution. 5G isn't standing on its own because the 4G core is still being used. When the 5G core is used, it'll be called standalone. So when 5G was defined, there were two movements making their way in networking. The first was open solutions. Providers didn't want proprietary solutions in their network if they could help it. And then the second is NFV, network function virtualization, where you're able to virtualize specialized hardware into software that runs on COTS commercial off-the-shelf servers. So 5G is defined in a way that the only required hardware are the new radio heads. Everything else should be available in software. So there are three basic goals for 5G. We want to be able to have much, much more bandwidth available to users at the ed edge, which is enhanced mobile broadband. And we want to support IoT devices. So that there's going to be a massive scale in the number of subscribers that are supported, and there'll be machine-to-machine -machine communications. And then also ultra low latency. So that means that you're really essentially able to replace wired ethernet connections with 5G. So you can support lots of different services like factory machines. So in order to meet these goals, new radios are required. And because of the scale of the requirements, many, many new radios are needed to support 5G. So at the edge of the network, instead of having 4G E node Bs, we have 5G G node Bs. So now the CIPRI vendors knew that they couldn't support massive bandwidth at the edge with CIPRI because CIPRI is synchronous and that means that you're using all the bandwidth whether or not there's any traffic. So they defined E CIPRI or Ethernet CIPRI to use as their front hall protocol between the radio heads and the BBU. So that's an asynchronous interface. So it's only, it's only pushing traffic that's actually there. And at the same time, the service providers wanted open interfaces. So they defined XRAN and radio over ethernet 
as front hall protocols. So those are standardized. In 5G, there are many more radios and they work together for more than just mobile handoff. They may work together to enable an edgy user to get more bandwidth by using multiple radios at once. And there are a lot of details to that that we're not gonna discuss. But the interface between the new radios is called XN as opposed to X1 in 4G. Because there are so many radios, you don't wanna have a BBU associated with each radio. So that functionality has been broken out into two parts, the distributed unit or the DU and the CU or the centralized or cloud unit. The DU takes care of low level functions that require extremely low latency and it can control multiple radios. The CUs take care of higher level functions that don't require the same latency to perform their services. And a CU can control multiple DUs. How exactly that functionality is split between the DU and the CU is described as various options, one to eight. And the connection between the radio head and the DU is still called front hall. And the connection between the DUs and the CU is called mid hall or F1. And the connection between the CU and the core is called back hall. So that's really a quick overview of the mobile transport terminology. I hope you found it helpful and thanks for watching.